Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. So as I'm sure all of you know, YouTube is pretty amazing. You can pretty much find anything on it. And the other day, I found a video that was just an hour of 90s Christmas commercials. It just brought back so many memories, and this just got me thinking, how incredible would it be to make a Christmas ornament that displays old 90s Christmas commercials on your tree? So, I'm gonna build that, because it's way too cool figured what a better shape than an old CRT TV. So it's all going to be able to be 3D printed and I'll tell you what components you need to use it and how to build your own. So let's get to it. Okay, now that that is printing, it'll take about three hours or so. And I don't know if you noticed, but that was the Simpsons TV. I thought it was a fitting design for the era. Yeah, anyways, here's the parts that you'll need. Okay, so we've got the Raspberry Pi Zero. This is the W. So this has wireless built in. This is the PowerBoost 1000. It's gonna be powering the Pi. I also soldered on a switch from the enable pin to the ground so that this will stick out when we've mounted it inside the TV so you can actually turn it on and off. This is a TFT LCD screen. It is the 240 by 320 pixel resolution. This is a little amplifier that will play the audio so we're going to set that up on the Pi because the Pi doesn't have the audio jack out. We're going to use this. This is actually a little speaker I pulled out of a um, out of an old tablet, but you can get any speaker, any small like 8 ohm speaker I think would work. I'll leave that up to you because I don't know the exact part, but maybe I'll leave a link for a part down below. And then finally this is a 2000 milliamp battery. I'm going to be using this battery so that it doesn't always have to be plugged in. Also you need a bunch of these jumper things. Forgot to mention those. And finally one of these uh, credit card magnifying glasses. You'll see why we need those in a bit. So I need to write a program that's going to control all this and I think there's some funny things you have to do to get the screen working. So I gotta work all that out now while it's printing and uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so I have pretty much finished the Python script that will be running on this, and I've just kind of connected all the wires. It's not set up in the case, but we've got the battery. I'm gonna make sure that everything works first. Let's run the program and see if we can get it working. Just switch this on. Go to the directory. Okay, so the way this works is basically it's running a small server right now and it's waiting to see if anything connects to it. So if you go into the browser, you go to the IP address of the Pi and then it's kind of cool. You do forward slash and then the part of the YouTube video, the last part that identifies it, you put that after the address and what it's going to do is find that video and then download it and then play it on here so if you've already got it downloaded then it doesn't have to download it again but it will take it directly from YouTube so if we run this I'm gonna see it here and then hopefully it goes. and that's it so let me go through the code with you so you understand what is going on. Let's talk about this for a second. So, the screen. All these pinouts are obviously going to be 
available in the documentation, whatever I provide, probably in Instructables. But the screen runs on SPI communication, so that means you have to go into the Raspberry Pi and enable the SPI so the Raspberry Pi config. Because the Pi Zero doesn't have an audio plug, you have to use this amp, like I mentioned, and that's connected to the uh, I2S pins. And then you enable that. There's uh, some documentation on Adafruit on how to do that. So to get the screen working, you have to use something called FBTFT, and there's a bit of a process to get it going. And once you get, you find the screen is working, you install something called mPlayer, and that's going to run the videos that we're taking from YouTube. And to take those videos from YouTube, we're running a library called PyTube, which allows you to just take a URL, download the video, it works really well, and then it's on your Raspberry Pi if you just download, you can just play it. That's pretty much everything, so let's go through the program. Uh, we import this socket server and base HTTP server. That allows us to run this here, which is the Pi waiting for the request through your browser, basically. So you're going to request uh, a video through the Pi using the Pi's local IP address on your network. And then when it sees that you've you've requested the Pi, it looks for the forward slash, and then anything after the forward slash, that's going to be the URL of your video, this part here. So if we send this to the Pi, it's going to take that last bit and it's going to search using PyTube, put it in, takes the URL of the video that we created down here, new URL, and it looks for the type that is an mp4, so it's looking for that video and then it will take the file name of the video, which is important because we need to play it later, and then we're going to see if that file already exists on the Pi. Because if it already exists, we don't have to download it. So it'll download it, and that's what that does. And then it renames it, it takes away all the spaces, um, the commas, semicolons, whatever's in the title, it makes it just letters and numbers because those other things can complicate it, just makes it simpler. And then we run this OS system, which is just like running a system command on the Pi. It uses mPlayer, as I mentioned, you had to download. And it will just play through the file, the video file, and then end. It'll just run through that entire thing. And of course, you can talk to it to any device that is connected to the network. So you can actually request videos through your phone when a video is finished, or stop one and then request another one. Okay, it is all assembled. I managed to cram everything in there. The coolest part about this is the lens in the front so that credit card magnifying glass you need to cut it down to 38 by 60 millimeters make small increments and in trimming and keep test fitting it because you want to make it curve inside of the 3d print and your print might be slightly different so do small cuts and keep checking and then eventually you'll get a nice curved fit just like this one so I managed to get all the components in there it's a little bit tight with the uh, jumpers if you were to solder all the wires you'd have a lot more room but at least this way you can reuse the components after. Double-sided tape is your best friend. On a lot of my projects I use it. Then you slide the battery in on the back 3D printed place. Screw it in place. So let's try it. First time. Alright. Seems to be working. We're up. Run the server, and we'll send it a command. Clap on. Clap on. Clap on. Clap on. There we have it. So it works. Let's go put it on the tree.
So there it is. It's working amazingly. It's playing right now an hour of Christmas commercials, but of course you can play any YouTube video you want and any video that you have on hand. You can load it on the Pi and then you can change the code so that it plays that file. So old Christmas movies, maybe episodes of Christmas television only, all those things, endless possibilities. If you are going to make one yourself, I only have one, well, three rules. Don't leave it on unattended. Don't charge it on the tree. Maybe just don't leave it on the tree when you're not around at all. All right, everyone, the project is finished. And you know the deal, if you want to make one yourself, there's a link below for the Thingiverse files so you can 3D print one. All the other stuff is just basically purchasing, so there's no building a circuit board in this one. I am so happy that this project is over. It actually was quite a struggle. My 3D printer kept having issues with the prints and they would fail. And I actually designed an entire different one that was way smaller. Cramming the Raspberry Pi in here, it did not fit. I actually broke the SD card, which then set me back the entire program because I didn't save it anywhere else. And all the settings that I had to change for the Raspberry Pi. But in the end, I'm glad that that project crashed and burned because I ended up with something even better. Now it has a battery in it, which the other one didn't. And I think overall, it's actually a better size anyways. And uh, I'm really happy with how the project turned out. So anyways, everyone, you know the deal.